can nearly go for it. Good evening, everyone. What a pleasure it is to see so many familiar and friendly faces. I'd like to thank you all for dialing in and joining us this evening to honor the late great Yankel Plitnik Zichroin Levrocha, whom we all knew as Uncle Yankel. <laughs> Before we get started, I'd like to make a, a quick public apology on behalf of the organizers. The fly we distributed had an Israeli flag in the background, and one of the design elements was the land of Israel. However, the flag excluded the territories of Yehuda and Shamron, and it would be extremely in character for Yankel to have strongly objected to that oversight. So please accept my apologies. I don't presume to speak for anyone else, but I want to share some thoughts about what Yankel meant to me. And I beg your forgiveness if my memories aren't quite what you recall. I was very young and it was so long ago. But if the facts aren't true, the feelings certainly are. I grew up with Uncle Yankel at my parents' Shabbos table pretty much every week of my entire single life and oftentimes family holidays and the occasional Yontif as well. Yankel would give me books to expand my thinking, like Menachem Begin's biography and the Prime Minister's book by Yehuda Avner. From when I was little, we'd argue about football, politics, and the meaning of obscure words. But when I think about it, I was just a silly little boy, all of 10 years old. But Yankel treated me like an equal. Because to him, I truly was. And that's the thing about Yankel Plitnik. Everybody was. Yankel wasn't better than anybody, and nobody was beneath him. He saw children as people too, humans worthy of dignity and respect. He had the compassion and sensitivity to identify that the children of Hendon Adas weren't comfortable in the main shul, and he could identify and follow through in executing a solution that children would love. That's not a normal thing. It's an extraordinary thing. He created a space for kids who didn't feel comfortable in shul to develop confidence and belong. A space for us to truly grow into ourselves. And Yankel did it for us. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe Yankel personally sponsored the renovation of that room to suit our purposes and dedicated it to Ilu Nishmas, his father. But it wasn't just something that Yankel did for us. That's fundamentally who Yankel was. How often do we see an older person, and excuse the cliche, but I think it's appropriate, from another generation and another world even, but who can see and speak to young people on their level and win their hearts in the way that Yankel so effortlessly won each of ours. When I was eight years old with a lisp, he would encourage me to say the Dvar Torah at the youth menu. I'd get up there and say, Good Sabbath elephant in this week's parachet, uh, Chazal say getting some smiles, et cetera, et cetera. So sure, we all had a good laugh, but the thing is, everyone was in on the encouragement. The culture of Uncle Yankel's youth minion was so comfortable, so positive, and so upbeat that there was no joke about it. And you can't fake that. It came from the top and it came from Uncle Yankel. It's so shocking to me when I think about how, how rare and unusual it is for someone as choshev and successful as that to give a kid a second thought. But it was so authentic and real, and we all felt it. And it's what drew the youth from across Hendon and Golders Green, and it's why we're here celebrating this great man's great life. Yankel truly loved us, and he was never creepy about it. It was so organic and granular that everyone had their own personal relationship with Uncle Yankel. And I hope that some of you will share your memories with us later on this call. There's a beautiful Maimar Chazal that Rashi quotes on Veshinantam Levonecha, that Levonecha Elu HaTalmidim. And I truly feel that way. Yankel was Machanach us all. He educated and parented while still letting us be. He was a giant who taught us by example. Yankel was Nifta in the week of Parshas Chayesara, Shabbos Chevron. And he was often away that week, actually spending Shabbos in Hebron. It sometimes feels so forced to shoehorn a Dvar Torah into whatever it is that you're really trying to talk about. But it's hard not to see some obvious parallels between Avram and Sora and the late great Yankel. And I want to highlight just one that literally jumps out in a way far too obvious to ignore. When Sora Imenu died, Avram came with spoida v'liv kaiso. V'liv kaiso with a small chaf. And the famous explanation is that when Sarah died, Avram only cried a little. 
So how do we say about the great Avraham on the loss of the great Tsar Imenu, but he only cried a little? When you lose a giant, where's the grief? And the answer that I think is true to life is that when a life like that draws to a close, when the days and years of that life are so completely full, there really isn't so much to cry about. Sure, we are sad that he's gone and we'll miss him, but there's nothing sad about your uncle's life. His life was absolutely brimming, so beautifully rich and so completely full. I'm only vaguely aware that he accomplished huge things and I can't say I'm all too familiar with them. I know that there were stockers and yeshivas and buildings and founding cities in Israel. But to me, his greatness was in his humility, in the small things. I only knew the very thinnest sliver of his life. I think I was only born when he was already in his 70s. But from that thin sliver, I'm just so completely full. Yankel was someone who did all he could to give all he had for as long as he could with all his heart and soul. And he gave a piece of it to all of us. And I think that's how we all remember Uncle Yankel. Everyone on this call was warmed and inspired by his life. And I ask myself, how many of us get to touch so many people and leave that kind of impact? And we know the magnitude of that impact because of the number of people on this call and the age range is substantial. And when a critical mass of those people aged out of the Hen and Adas youth minion, there's a straight line from the Hen and Adas youth minion to Nishmas Yisrael blossoming into existence, which has since flowered into the flourishing and premier Kahila that it is today. If there's one thing I'll never forget about our Uncle Yankel, it's that authentic compassion can pierce the generational divide and that everyone deserves to be treated like a person worthy of attention and respect. We all wish that his neshama has an aliyah, and I just want to close with what I know to be true. I know that we will all miss Uncle Yankel terribly. But I also know how proud he was of each and every one of us from the very earliest days of the youth minion. And I know that just as he was our most determined and unshakable advocate in this world, he will be our male Yoshar in the next. And I know that his memory, that piece of himself that he gave to anyone who was lucky enough to know him will live on in the way he touched each and every one of our hearts. Thank you for listening. I'd now like to introduce our next speaker, Rav Togendaft, who is the Rav of so many of the Youth Minions alumni today. And apart from that, Rav Togendaft is himself a Youth Minion alumnus and was also the Gabai of the Youth Minion back in the day, some day before my time. I'd now like to ask Rav Togendaft to honor your uncle's memory with some thoughts. Thank you so much, Rav Nelly, Shalom Aleichem, to everybody who is on this incredible Zoom meeting. All here, each one of us, with very, very warm memories of dear Uncle Yankel, Rabbi Yankel, Zechat Tzadik Levrocha, who we, all, who we will all sorely miss, and who I can say for myself made a real impact in my life. And certainly, as I look back, I feel that a, a great part of who I am today, Ani Hakoton, the little that I am, but what there is, I feel very, very much, I gained hugely from my interactions with Rabbi Yankel and the world that I grew up in, which was so much influenced by Rabbi Yankel. Uh, as Reb Nelly said, I had the tremendous honor and privilege to serve as the Gaba of the Hendradas Youth Minion. First, Arya Melinek was my co gaba and then Aaron Maya Ackerman was my co gaba And many of the faces today who I can see on this Zoom meeting uh, also had the simcha of being in this, uh, in this youth minion. And uh, we had a wonderful time full of happiness, full of uh, joy, full of singing. Um, and we really had a sense of belonging and we wouldn't think of missing shul Shabbos morning. It, would, it was completely unheard of because it was a place that we really, really wanted to be. Now, when I went to yeshiva, my uh, kesher with Yankel did not cease. And in my first year in Yeshiva, I had the pleasure of going with him uh, onto the boat uh, together with him and Katzala uh, to see the Aritz Sheva boat, uh, which he had sponsored as he was very, very much 
uh, one of the people behind the Gush Amunim movement. And um, I was thinking to myself, the fact that he was gub of the Hendon, the fact that he was the patron of the Hendon Adas Youth Minion, and the fact that he was the sponsor of this ship, are they two disparate, distinct parts of Yanko Pliknik, or was, was there a common denominator? And I really feel that there is a common denominator because Yankel was somebody who had this desire to give a voice to those who were not being heard. And I think that this is something which is inherent in the name Yaakov, in the name Yankel. I heard from my Rebbe Ramesh Shapira Zatzal, um, Beshem the Maharal, that the name Yaakov is a Yud, which is the letter of Ruchnius. It is the only letter which floats up above the line. It's the letter that has the smallest amount of Gashmius, the smallest, smallest of all of the Isias. And Akev means the heel and is the lowest part of the entire human. And Yaakov, the idea of a Yaakov is to take Ruchnius, the sublime ideas, the Kedusha, the Tahara, the connection with the Rabbeinu Shalolam, and it shouldn't just remain up for the elite. It should go all the way down through the whole system, that the Yud should reach the parts that others weren't listening to. And this is certainly um, what I feel he embodied uh, in making sure that we, the Akev, the little ones, had a way that we could express ourselves. And those who were not able to be heard because of the very, very strong left-wing media in Eretz Yisrael, they are also the Akev. They were also the ones who were marginalized in society. And they had the right to be heard, that, um, that, that they should be people who are listened to. And this is something which Yaakov uh, brought to all of us. I'd like to share with you something that I saw from the Holy Piazetz Nareba. The Piazetz Nareba, of course, was killed Al Kiddush Hashem in the Holocaust, and an American uh, serviceman found his writings after the war, and Baruch Hashem, they were published and have illuminated Klal Yisrael ever since. So, in, in his Siach Im Hamalamdim, Ba'ovi Sabonim, he writes that already in his time, before the Melchama, there were children who were just going off the derech. No one could see the derech anymore. There were so many people, Nebuch, who were leaving Torah and Mitzvahs. And the Eish Kodesh, the Piazet Nareba, in his Sefer Choyvah Satalmidim, he said, how could it be? Why is such a thing happening? Is there a reason for this? And he says, what I think the reason is, He says that all of a sudden, his, in his times, children were maturing much more quickly, or at least they thought they were. And they thought they already understood the world at a young age. And as opposed to previous generations, where they would respect the authority of their elders and the advice and opinion of their elders, there had come a time that they thought they really understood what's going on in the world at a very young age. And therefore, they felt that they didn't need to listen to the elders. In fact, there was some animosity towards the elders who they felt were tyrants and were forcing them to do things they didn't want to do. He says, that he's growing old before his time. He thinks he has a great and discerning um, approach to life and he understands life when really he's, he's not cooked yet. He's still too immature. And, and, but he feels already ahead of his time. So the Eish Kodesh tells us, so what should we do? What are we supposed to do? What is the solution to such a worldview? And he says, We have to let the children know that they are the ones who have responsibility. They have to educate themselves. You're the one who is responsible for your own education. All we can do is try and guide you in the right direction. But we're not tyrants who are trying to force you to do things. You're the one who's responsible for your own spirituality. You're the one who's responsible for your own growth. And all we can do is try and, and, and be good role models for you and hope that you'll go in the right direction, but not to force you into it, but to really give you responsibility. And by doing that, you yourself, will take that responsibility. He brings Chazal who say that if there's a pot that a number of people are trying to cook, it will never become boiled because each one will think that somebody else is responsible. 
He says, we have to let the children know you are responsible. You can become somebody great, but it's totally up to you. And this was a tremendous gift that Yankel gave to us, which is something which unfortunately we don't see happening so much. And instead of trying to force us into a box, he took us out of the main shul and he said, this is a place, boys, where you can belong. This is a place where you can fear the tish, where you can run you can run things, we will guide you, we will help you. But this is a place where it's totally up to you. And I have to say that the message which he gave to us, which is that we are supposed to take responsibility, is something that looking at the faces here on this Zoom meeting is something which we all glean so much from. I can see all of these faces a little bit older than, when, than, than we were back over there in Hendon Adas and with deeper voices, and not just with a beard, but for some of us with a beard that isn't as ginger as it once was. And we are people who learned from Yankel that we have to try and take responsibility, that we're the ones who are supposed to be laning, not just to leave it up to Mr. Segal, or we have to take responsibility for the laning, we have to take responsibility for the davening, even if we don't sound like Chazan Siegel, who should be gesund and stark. We're the ones who have to give divrei Torah, even though we may not do it in the most beautiful Liverpudlian accent and with such depth as Rabbi Robert Schlitter, who I spoke to today and gives his bracha for the Zoom meeting. He says he likes speaking to live people. So, um, so we, we can't give a, a drosha necessarily like he could, and we couldn't sing like Chazan Siegel, and we can't lane like those golden oldies, Zichroinom uh, Livracha. But you know what? We can do it like we can do it, and we have to do it like we can do it. And he empowered us, and he said, you buy the Kiddush, and we would keep it under the bimmer in Hedra Adas, in the in, in the Ched, in the, in the Beis HaMedrash, it would be kept there. We'd hope to, we'd find it all Shabbos morning, and there was the whiskey there, Back in the day, nobody would touch it. could be left there for, for months on end. Nobody would touch it. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and he would teach us that we have to take responsibility, that shul should be a place where there's not supposed to be talking. You know, the elder generation, they grew up and it was a miracle they even came to shul. How many Holocaust survivors were there? And how many people were brought up by Holocaust survivors? How many people who were, who were brought up with a very austere Judaism, says the Heiliger Piazetna, Nefesh Ayelet Vana Einos Oveles Esor Atzbus, that children and teenagers have a very low tolerance for depression and melancholy and, 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 and this feeling of that, 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 uh, that, that everything has to be austere and the Torah does have to be and there has to be Kovat Torah, but there has to be Simcha and, and he showed us that, that, that we have a place where, where he empowered us. And he said, you grow and get on with it and take responsibility. And we are all, the whole community, and I would say, seeing these faces from all over the world, the whole world has gained so much from that little base on Medrash in Henda Adas with Yankel, with his yellow cards and red cards, teaching us that we have to daven like a mensch and we shouldn't talk during davening. And we have to take Achrayas. We have all gained so much um, from Yankel. And of course, just to close, um, needless to say that um, he had his bracha from the Chofetz Chaim. He told me that his grandfather lived on the other side of a semi-detached, I don't know if you could call it a house even, but his grandfather lived on the other side of this semi-detached abode with the Chofetz Chaim living on the other side. The Heiliger Chofetz Chaim who gave him a bracha when he was two, three years old and whose grandfather was one, someone who was one of the closest people to the Chofetz Chaim. And, you know, he, Kanaina Hora lived, don't say, you know, one doesn't need to say Kanaina Hora anymore. He lived to 97 years old. Who knows how much were his tremendous own zuchuyos and how much was this bracha from the saintly Chofetz Chaim. And I used to tell my children, shake his hand back in the day when we could still shake hands. Remember that, yeah? We can still shake hands with people. I tell my children, shake his hand. Here was a man who was touched by the Chofetz Chaim. Here was a man who had the bracha from the Chofetz Chaim. And all of us who somehow had the connection with him, certainly we felt 
that we knew somebody who was impacted personally by the Chofetz Chaim. And the world, unfortunately, has lost some of its illumination, some of its spark by his passing. And Rabbi Isai, all of those who are here today, we know what we have to do. We have to try and provide that illumination. We have to try and take the torch which he handed to us and we have to keep on running with the torch and we have to hand this torch over to others, each one of us in our own lives, whoever it is that we, whoever it is that we come into contact with, old and young and especially the young, just like Rabbi Uncle did. We need to show them what a beautiful Torah it is, how exciting the mitzvahs are, how geschmack Shabbos can be, how geschmack davening can be, and how choshev the Torah can be and davening can be. And but Ezra Sashem, between each of us, we should try and just illuminate the world a little bit more. And this should be as an aliyah for the neshama of the great Rabbi Yankel Pliknik, Seicha Tzadik Livrocha, who impacted on us so much. And we should be Zeicha Be'ezra Hashem to sing and dance together, to greet the Mashiach Tzidkenu and the Gula Shlema. He'll take us on his boat again. He'll take us out there. We'll sing and dance with him. And Be'ezra Hashem will show him that we've learned from his ways. And we've learned from that which he taught us, and we too have tried to make the world a better place. Amen. Thank you for sharing those moving words from Togenacht. I think that beautifully captured the essence of how special it was for Yankel to give us that space to breathe and belong, but also to take Achrayas and grow up as well. As Yankel transitioned into his 80s, he remained a fixture of the youth minion, but running it all became a little bit too much. And my old Rebbe, Rav Mendy Chizik, who had taught for years in all our local schools and already beloved by all, took over the minion. Rav Chizik seamlessly continued Yankel's mission with his personal twist on the same flavor that the youth minion was so famous for and has continued strong for 16 years since. And although Yankel had slowed down a little and he wasn't able to participate to the same extent as he could in his younger days, he still always joined the youth minion for davening and a whiskey. And he loved us just the same as he always had. It's my honor to now ask Rob Chizik to share his perspective lead of leading the next generation of the youth minion and continuing Uncle Yankel's special work. Thank you, Nathaniel. Thank you, Rob David. Mm. Can everyone hear me? Just a nod means I can. Yeah, okay, Shkayach. It's very hard to try and put together in words my feelings. You see, I'm still really in the youth minion. If not for COVID, we'll still be there, been there last week, we'll be there again this week. I just want to share with you the thoughts and how goshes that I have over the last day since I heard the sad passing of our friend. You see, Yanko was Nifta, heir of Shabbos, Parshas Chayasara. He was brought to Menuchas, Yaboisai, the beginning of Parshas Toldos, and now we're the beginning of Parshas Vayetzi. Nothing is coincidental. So I'd like to take a message from each of those sedras that will hopefully leave us with something touching and a fitting tribute to somebody who was so great. At the beginning of Chaya Sora, I saw a question asked by one of the Gaboni Yerushalayim, of Tzip Pesach Frank. At the Petira of Sora Emenu, the Possek writes, Avram came to mourn for Sora, for live Koisa and to cry for her. I saw the Kasha this year for the first time. Why wasn't Yitzchok must be his mother? Where was Yitzchok? The son. Where was Yitzchok? No Hesper from Yitzchok, not at all. Says of Tzipesa, Frank, an unbelievable answer. He says Yitzchok couldn't be must his mother adequately because he only knew her in her later years. He was born as a Benzakunim to his mother. She was 90 when she gave birth to him. So a lady in her old age behaves the way she does a elech a lady, Beseda, that's the derech oilom. Yitzchok felt, I can't depict the life of Sorimenu. Avroham, who knew her in her younger years, only Avroham had the ability to be with somebody who he knew in her younger, perhaps more difficult years. I believe Rashi is coming to tell us when the Posik says in Chayi Soro that Avram wasn't masked with her, Yitzhak wasn't masked with her because he didn't know in the younger years. But the Posik repeats Shanei Chayi Soro. The Posik repeats this was the life of Soro. Says Rashi, Kulon 
Shovin Letoivo, says Rashi, every year was equally good. Maybe Yitzchok felt, I didn't know my mother in the younger years. But the Torah HaKadosh writes the words, no. Shnei Chaye Soro. All those years were equally good, Yitzchok Avinu. Your mother you knew in her older years. She wasn't any different in the younger years. Let me start off by telling you, all of us friends here this evening, I knew your uncle only from his 80s and late 90s. So how can I be must be your uncle? I knew a man, a gem of a yid, with an enormous heart and a passion for the youth of the next generation. But I believe it when your uncle's patiron parashas chayas so the Torah is giving us a message. Kulon shovin letoivo. The uncle that we knew in the youth minion. As Rabbi says, the faces I see here are faces of our minion. We all knew your uncle from a different era. Kulon shovin letoivo. But your uncle was brought to rest in Eretz Yisrael. On parashas told us. Now, boy, side there are two sedras. That start with the same words. Eile toldois noyach. And ve eile toldois yitzchok ben Avram. Yet strangely enough, eile toldois noyach is called noyach. Ve eile toldois yitzchok ben Avram is not called yitzchok. It's called toldois. Either call one noyach and one yitzchok. Okubo told us. Why is Parshas Noyach not called Noyach, but called, not called Toldus, but called Noyach? And the Parshas told us, the Torah Akdosha called the Parsha told us. I think the answer again gives us the essence of who Yanka was. Parshas Noyach discusses Noyach, Noyach's life, Noyach's difficulty. Noyach trying to save the world. Noyach in the Teva. The parasha reverberates around Noyach. But in last week's parasha, when Yanka was brought to Menuchos, in parasha told us the parasha is called Toldos. Because it's got nothing to do with Yitzchak himself. It's to do with the children. Yanka was a man who was brought to Menuchos and parasha told us. He did it for the next generation. The very fact that so many of us can call him uncle, uncle, is testimony to the fact he was much older than my uncle. He could have been my Zayda. To the boys and youth minion who last saw him, he could have been the elder Zayda. But no, toiled us. We were family. He didn't live for himself. He lived for the youth minion. As Rabbi David so eloquently said before, he did it for the youth minion. They should lead. They should be Gaboim. They should lean. Then we come to Parshas Vayetze. We sit here this evening. Says the Torah HaKadosh Vayetze Yaakov. Yaakov left. Vayelech Choron and he went to Choron. Rashi quotes the famous Chazal. Why does the Torah have to say Yaakov went out and Yaakov went? He went. Or Why the repetition? Why the synonyms? Why the parallel parallelism? Says Rashi. When Yaakov left. It caused a stir. Yitzias tzadik minamokoim. The leaving of a great person creates an impression. The feeling of somebody leaving is felt. Yitzias tzadik minamokoim. When a great person leaves somewhere, there's a yitzia, there's a void, there's an emptiness, and it's felt. So the Torah says, Vayetze Yaakov. I don't believe in coincidences. To mention the name of our friend, Uncle Yankel, and the Torah is telling us, Vayetz de Yaakov. When a man like Rabbi Yankel left, he left us behind. And we discussed this in Vayetze. 
the Torah is teaching us new Oyser Goshim. Rashi quotes the Medrash. And Rashi says that the Torah HaKadoshah writes it by Yaakov. And the Novi writes it also in Megillah Rus. Vatetse Nomi. Nomi left Moyov. So the Medrash tells us that when Yaakov and Nomi left, their leaving showed, made an impression and a void. So the Kleoka asks, you can't compare the two. When Nomi left Moyov to return to Eretz Yisrael, there was no one else left in Moyov. There were no righteous people left there. Moyov is deserted now. So I understand how the Novi writes, Vatetse Nomi. Nomi left. Avoid. So the Kriyoka wonders, why Vayetse Yaakov? Does the Torah say Vayetse Yaakov? He's leaving his father's house. There's Yitzchok Avinu there. Does that still make an impression? Vayetse Yaakov? Does that still make an impression? Nomi left. Stayed I understand. Nomi left Moyov. The Kadusha was gone. But when Yaakov left his father's home, was the, was the Vayetse Yaakov so impressionable? There's still a Yitzchok Avinu. in his opening address to the Yeshiva in Ponovish, said like this. We see from Rashi quoting the Medrash that even if there's a base of Medrash full of people and one person leaves, yes, it makes its mark. One person. And there's 99 others there. It creates a void. As Be'ezer Hashem, the HaKadosh Baruch will remove this plague from us. And we will go back to the youth minion, Pesiyat HaDishmaya. It still will never be the same. Because by Yitzhah Yaakov, there could be 99 other Mispalalim there. But that void of the, created by Yitzhah Yaakov is there. It's a void. I can only tell you my personal har- hargosha of what I experienced, what I felt, and what I enjoyed. I am proud to say, proud that both my sons governed with me in the youth minion every Shabbos. How they loved the youth minion. One's now a younger man living next to Sroll, and one is in Gates of Yeshiva. And how much they personally loved the youth minion. The kiddish, the smile of Uncle Yankel. And Yankel attended my son's bar mitzvah. We'll never forget how Yankel was the connection of my boys to a previous generation. Generations. Let me tell you an incident. I was t- telling over once a youth minion a story about Rabbi Sazam the Meltzer. And Yankel shouted out in the middle of a shir, I knew him. That wasn't the only time. And after Davni, I went to Yankel with my son. I said, Yankel, tell my son, tell us. Let us know what you saw about Mrs. Zalman. He described Mrs. Zalman's flat. He described how poverty stricken he was and how he came from England with money to give to Mrs. Zalman. And my boys looked at him, astounded. This is Gadoilin from the post-war era. Do we know that Michal Yudin Levkovich, a god of Aldoir, once related that he had been close enough to the Chovetz Chaim. The Chovetz Chaim had traveled to his town. And the entire town, men, women, children, went out to visit the Chovetz Chaim. He said, for an hour, I battled myself. What should I do, said Gamechel Yehuda, to himself? Do I close my Gemara and go, or do I stay here? And he decided, no, I'm staying. 
Talmud Torah connected Kulam, he did not see the Chavetz Chaim. 70 years the Abosai went by. 70 years passed. And when discussing this incident with his grandchildren, he said, I made a mistake. I should have gone to the Chavetz Chaim. They said, but Zayda, Talmud Torah connected Kulam. You calculated, you thought. You made a clear cheshbon that Torah is more valuable than anything. So why did you not, why do you now regret it? Sadiq Mechan Yehuda, you have to understand. My 70 years of learning later would have been different had I seen the face of the Chavetz Chaim. So I told my sons, we saw a Yid who saw the Chavetz Chaim. This was a Yid who was proud. He brought out a Sefer, Bishvili Radin. He gave me a copy. We can't buy it in the shops. Beautiful Sefer. Family memories of the home they shared under one roof with Moron, the Chavetz Chaim. Let me tell you another time. The young interrupted my share. There were many, but I'm highlighting the ones that tell us who Yanka was. To have told you that Shabbos was Mochor Chodesh. Sunday was due to be Rosh Chodesh. And we named the famous Haftorah of the story of David HaMelech running away from his father-in-law. And in the story we discussed, I told the youth minion, there's a massive question in the story. Yonason, heir to the throne, crown prince, decides to help David seek refuge from Shaul. So Yonason said to David, you hide in the field. Go and hide. I will test out my father's anger. And I'll relay his response via secret code. I will shoot arrows. And I will tell the lad who accompanies me to fetch the arrows. And depending on the word that I use, you will know if the coast is clear. So David's in hiding. Yonason goes out with an hour. He shoots the arrows. And he gives a coded message. It's danger. Don't come back. If Haftar would end there, I wouldn't have had a shave. But Yonason turns to the Nar and says, you go back. David comes out of hiding and the two men embrace each other, Yonason and David. So I asked him in the youth minion, what was the spiel? Why bother with the arrows and the secret code? The two men met up anyway. Why could Yonason whisper to David, run for your life? Why the code? Why the spiel? Why the necessity for the drama? Tell David straight. Yanko used to sit in Shea when I spoke with his eyes closed. But now his eyes opened. He said, I've always had that question. I said, the Mephoshim tell us that David did not want to be the, you're sorry, Yonason did not want to be the bearer of bad tidings. Yes, he met David later. But to hurt David by saying, you've got to run. He couldn't say it. So he acted out. He played out the drama of the arrows. And let his message be told with a remez through a hint, through a play. But he couldn't, Jonasson couldn't hurt his friend's feelings. After Davening, Yankel came to me and said, I love that vote. I believe it's because that was Yankel's, Yankel's essence. He couldn't hurt others' feelings. That was our Yankel. A connection to the previous doyer. And a man who cared for the toil dois, And he couldn't hurt other feelings. I remember when they asked me to join the youth minion. And Yankel told me there's some sort of system of red cards and yellow cards. I said to Yankel, I can't do it. He said, fine. I don't like them either. We never... I say, never, in the days that I've been there, Baruch Hashem, we didn't have red cards, yellow cards. But Yanka was that first person. We couldn't hurt someone else's feelings. 
That's what Simon says in Parsha, why Yates say, as you all know, there are no psuchos and no stumos in the Parsha. The Parsha is one long chapter, no opening paragraphs, no closing paragraphs. It says Svasemes that Yaakov Avinu lived through so much in Parshas Vayetze and he was the same person throughout. Being robbed, left penniless, learning in the yeshiva and then going to build his family, earn Parnosa, become wealthy. No psuchos, no stumois, no change. The Parsha is straight. Yaakov Avinu was the same Yaakov Avinu throughout all his tukufas. Our uncle Yankel, we can say with pride, lived through so many different tukufas. I remember him telling me, he said, my father, he said, was in Volosian when it closed. That was 1917. What an era. And the Yankel that we knew, and I'll tell you more, when I was about three, four years into the youth minion, they made the kiddush for Yankel to celebrate 25 years of the youth minion. I remember where it was and the becha that they gave him. He looked at me and said, Mendy, he said, they can't count many more than 25 years. That was more than 10, 12, 14 years ago. That was our uncle. The same uncle, every tkufa. The way we knew him is the way he always was. Let me end. There's so much to say, but let me end as follows. The Possek tells us in this parasha, Vayikatz Yaakov, the soft havens of those words, Vayikatz is a tzadi, Yaakov is a vase, Mishnosso is a vov, Vayoimar is a reish. It stands for tzibur. Vayikatz Yaakov, Mishnosso, Vayoimar. Yaakov awoke from his slumber. He was an ish tzibur. Ish tziburi, that's who he was, a communal man. Chazal tell us the word Mishnosso is a spare word. By Paroi, it says, Vayikatz Yaakov, Vayikatz Paroi. No, the, no word Mishnosoi, Vayikatz Paroi. Because Paroi may have woken up, but he stayed sleeping. He walked in a sleep like trance. What did he do with his life? But Yankel didn't do that. Vayikatz Yaakov, Mishnosoi, he woke up, he built. People would have said that they said to Polish Rov, when the Rov built Ponovich in World War II. They said, are you dreaming? And he said, I may be dreaming, but I'm not sleeping. Our Yankos, Vayikat Yaakov Mishnosoi Vayoymar. He woke up from the dream. He may have dreamt plans, but he didn't sleep. He put them into action. He built a minion, which we can proudly say today, finest youth minion in town. I'm not unbiased, but I've got to say it. He woke up from his slumber. He may have been dreaming, but he wasn't sleeping. And we asked the Gaboy Nishlolom, Beschus the soft tavis of that word, the ish tzibur that Yankel was. Vayikatz, Yaakov, Mishnosa, Vayoymar. The schus of the tzibur, we should be zoicha beze Hashem, departed the tzibur again. When we see Uncle Yankel, when he's Vayikatz, Yaakov, now Kodesh Baruch will say, Oz Yakutsu v'yegananu, when they will wake up and rejoice, the shoich offer those who are sleeping in Eretz Yisrael and the chutz loret. But he cuts out Mishnah Sleiv Ayoimar. Manoyro Hamokim Hazeh. How beautiful is Yankel's little youth minion! It will come with us to Shalami Hakodesh. We look forward to your kutsu. He will wake up. We run. We will dance and we'll continue davening together. Thank you. Ubilah Shem Moves Al Netzach. Omoch Shem Kim Dimu Mel Kaponim V'Neimah Amen. Oh, man. Thank you, Reb Chizik, for your beautiful and unique perspective. And what a pleasure it is to hear Tara from you once again. I know that as long as the youth minion continues going strong like it has under your stewardship, Uncle Yankel's spirit will live on. And I think that what you said is so true, that it says everything, that no matter which takufa of your uncle's life we each knew him, kulam shavam the and he left his roisham an impact on us all. Our last speaker will be the local legend that is Yossi Fakhla, but I think at this point, we'd like to invite anyone with fond memories of Uncle Yankel to share those treasured memories with us and to give your uncles Neshama and Aliyah. I, I imagine this will probably be a circus with uh, 99 participants, but that's what we're here for. So we'll try and call on people individually, unmute you one by one. Please try to keep it short so that others can uh, speak as well. Um, 
not sure how we're doing this. Stephen, I think they're going to, if you have something to say, do you want to raise your hand or text Stephen and Stephen will unmute you? Wave your hand and I'll, and I'll unmute. Uh, Barry Ackerman, shall we start with you? Was that yes? Okay, hold on. If you unmute yourself. There we go. Is that okay? Yes. Um, evening to all. Thank you, Stephen, for organizing this most appropriate Zoom call to honor and pay tribute to a remarkable gentleman. He would have certainly approved this event as he himself was a great conversationalist. By way of introduction, I knew Yankel in three guises. Firstly, as a pupil, he was nearly 50 years old, 50 years older than I, and was wise on all subjects, as most were in that era of Hendnadas, when they were just as comfortable in the city boardroom as they were in management meetings in Hendnadas. And he indeed was a director of a public company at that time. They were all men for all seasons. So over the years, he imparted to me counsel and knowledge on an array of topics. I knew Yankel secondly, as a friend. I knew Yankel all my life due to his warm friendship with my father. And of course, by attending Hedden Adas. Indeed, he wrote the obituary of my father some 30 years ago. He, he encompassed the period in Hedden Adas that might one day be referred to as its golden years, when the place overflowed and the collection of personalities and strength of characters were as colorful as they were daunting. Into this heady mix entered Yankel from Liverpool. He was like a fish to water, and not before long he made his mark. During this time, he held a variety of senior positions over a prolonged period. He always reminisced animatedly about the annual elections because, of course, he was a great advocate for principles he believed in. And though in those days, they were fought with strong and competitive campaigning. The one he used to talk most about is when he stood against the other great stalwarts and friends, Echobe Joseph Reed, for the presidency. That was a real, a real ferocious campaign, he told me, door to door, membership lists, crossing out, ticking, phone calls, all in great spirits. Unfortunately, he lost by only a handful of votes. He never did a Trump, but probably with retrospect might have done so. And to go off peace for a moment, he always said to me that after the AGM, they used to go next door, as some of you will remember, to the pub, the load of hay, just to let off some steam, and they used to have a little ginger ale or a Schweppes bitter lemon or another soft drink. Some of them might have needed and probably did have something a little stronger after that, perhaps a, you know, a famous grouse or a white horse. But that would always clear the air and the following day they'd be best of friends. And he, he sort of was disappointed when the pub closed down, um, not only because of the generous car parking he provided, but also because he thought that people have stress in life. They work hard, they go home, they have families, it's hard work. And he always believed in, he thought people should go for a drink, should relax for an hour or so with a newspaper, with a friend, just to let off steam. But Yanko was, was a man, he was a man of the world. And, and thirdly, of course, in my capacity as president of the youth service. Indeed, the, that title and honor in tradition with a ra rather loose concept of democracy in Hindadas, was bestowed upon me, not by the sword, but the scotch. It was indeed Yankel who um, decided over a, a, a glass of whiskey over Kiddish that he wanted a title for me. He wanted me to defend the youth service, promote it, encourage the young boys, and so appointed me as the, uh, as the president. And of course, in, in, in good order, I reciprocated. I filled his glass, which he gratefully received, and honoured him with the life presidency, which he also gratefully acknowledged. He now, of course, will always be fondly remembered as a founding father of this service. Just a little bit about the timing of his service to, 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 to the youth. And um, Rabbi Chiswick, as always, um, mentioned about the silver goblet we, we dedicated to him in 2006. 
Uh, and we chose 25 years at the time because it was a round number. And he was absolutely right when he says to you, actually, I did many more years. I um, try to then and now try to sort of rumble through the historical records within the Hen and and our, our lovely secretary, Mayor Moller, helped me in, and assisted me. And we went through a few old president's reports. It would, it would seem that the youth service started in, in the early 70s. Um, actually, the first person mentioned is Stephen Greenwood, Stephen Greenwood, but Yankel took up after, uh, shortly after that. But in all, he must have spent over 40 years presiding over the youth service, looking after it, dedicating his life to it. And when many people move countries, move areas, or even move shawls today, if you wanted to see uncle, all you had to do was turn up on a Shabbos morning to the base of Medrash and Hen and open the door, and staring, staring at you from that far side, that seat on the far side overlooking the room would be Yankel. And Yankel did enormous work in the background for the youth. I mean, in those days and over the decades, the youth in Hen wasn't always supported. You know, we did have tricky moments, um, and depending on the individual involved, Yankel was a heavyweight. So he always held the ground for the youth. He wanted the youth to create their own service, prepare their own service, and run their own service. The, the yellow and red cards, of course, was an initiative he brought in when one set of boys were particularly unruly. And I shall never forget this poor young fellow at Kiddish who came to me and said, what do I do? Your uncle gave me two red cards. Does that mean I can't come next week? And so I had to reassure him that, don't worry, your uncle, forget about the second red. Um, one Harry, I'm sorry. To I'm, I'm terribly sorry to interrupt, but um, Yossi Fachlik um, needs to leave shortly. So, oh, with, with, your, with, your, with your permission, can we, can we go to Yossi and then perhaps come back to you afterwards for some I think um, the, 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 uh, the conclusion? The, the first half has ended. Uh, I'll start on the second half after Yossi. Shkoya, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, let me unmute him. Hold on. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much, Stephen. Nelly, it's an absolute pleasure to hear your dulcet tones. And this- Oh, wait, I had more to say to introduce you. Yeah, I know. You, you want to introduce me? I'll keep quiet. You've got literally 20 seconds. Go. <laughs> nah, go for it. Thanks. I was kidding. Um, by the way, you are a, a result of Yankel's investment. Because as you said, seven, years old, eight years old, he'd put you up on, on the chair. Good Sabbath, Opi, good Sabbath, Yankel, good Sabbath, everybody. And, you'd, and you'd, you'd, you'd have your platform to say what you wanted to say. Mm -hmm. and your words that you said this evening were so beautiful, we could have ended the evening there and then. And I know many people on this Zoom would have um, wanted that too, but I'm not going to go into that now. Um, I wanted to give a Dvar Torah, but Mendy's given every single Dvar Torah known to mankind for Pashas Vayete and Tolde, so that's not a problem. And I think Yankel would want to uh, celebrate with the people that he loved the most. And looking at this attendee, looking at all of you here, this was Yankel's real life. In this life, in this life of Yankel's Shabbos, this was, as of Roberts, the Zangazinten Stark, would say the word Beratius is the Oisius Yore Shabbos. In other words, don't make your six days work so you can rest on Shabbos. Make your Shabbos so important that your six days mean nothing. Yankel was a very, very busy man in those six days. But his busyness was for our youth minion on Shabbos. And for those of us who knew him in both his worlds, could see this Yankel, this Yaakov Avinu, preside on a Shabbos, and then return to us the following Shabbos after God knows what he's done that week, gone around the world, yeshivas, moisters, businesses, investments, unbelievable. And then Shabbos comes, and there's Yankel in the base of Medrash. So he came up to me. I just finished my tenure in um, South Hampstead Shul, being the assistant Rav Letter of Shlomo Levine, Zagazintan Stark, 
for those who want the best Hesped for Rabbi Lord Sachs on online, you've got to listen to Shlomo Levine's Hesped, just a side fact. And Yankel said, Yossi, I want to talk to you. You know, you've got many, many youth minyonim all over the land now. You've got one in here, you've got one in there, just starting, and we've also got one. But here's the thing. No more is a youth minion a luxury. It's about to become a necessity. I need you on board. I said, why? Yankel, it's a machaya. He said, it's different now. He said, now we have to do, and this is exactly what Rav David was saying, we have to make young chazanim, young balei koire, young rabbonim, people who can do all these things from a very young age with the confidence to do it. I need you on board. When I say he took me on board, if you remember when Kosher Kingdom used to be that little potsy place across the road on Golders Green Road in that tiny freezer center, Kosher Kingdom, who remembers that back in the 90s? <laughs> talking about remembers the old time. When I, re- when I would used to make it to our Torah, Mendy, and say, Yitzhak Kovinu, Yankov Yanko would say, yeah, I knew him. Anyway, so um, we used to go to Kosher Kingdom in those days, Kosher King, and Yanko would come with me and buy the herring and buy the ayakichlech. He was so involved in every aspect. And for those in that era, I'll call it the Nishmas era because most of the boys in that era are now the incredible young Balabatim from, from Nishmas. We went from, and Barry, you'll remember this, approximately 30, 35 a Shabbos. And it started increasing and getting bigger and bigger until one day, one Shabbos, Yankel said to me, I've got the Rishus from Mr. Weeder to move in to the hall. So we moved into the main hall. There were 85 of us. I think Barry did the Haftari, he normally did, he used to start every sentence with mm, to get the right uh, tune and then get into the words. And during Haftari, Yankel went out. I <laughs> see Gertner's laughing. Yeah, Get Yankel went out, comes running back in. Running back in, and he whispers to me, Yossi. I said, Yes, Yankel. There's 89 of us. Go on. There's 76 of them talking about the main minion. It was incredible. It was incredible. And there were many, I repeat, and there still are many very, very good youth minionim around. But it was something special. Bali Tfila all around the country on Yom and Aroyim learned their craft in the Adas youth minion. Public speakers all around the world, learned their craft as a youngster, given that platform by Yankel in the youth menu. The pride of Henton Adas. And as Barry said, Yankel was a heavyweight. Oh yeah, we had our knockers. They tried, uh-uh. They would not get past Yankel. They could not get past Yankel. Jeremy Rowe is, is a witness to that as well. We stood firm because we knew we had something very, very special, but maybe something even more special, something important for the future. It was my honor to take those 10 years and help Yankel make the minion something even maybe hopefully more than it was when I, before I got there. But it was all about Yankel. There was nothing else. And he wanted nothing in return. Just looking around in that base of Medrash, as Nelly said, which was actually refurbished in his father's name. And so many stories that Yankel would tell us about his father and about the life in, in Liverpool, all these wonderful things which, which would make him this calm, Shabbostic man once a week. And we were to, to witness that. 
singing with us. It was amazing. And wow, let's be honest now, how many of the main shul men would try and come in to daven with us? And how we had to very surreptitiously remind them that their place was not with us. Apart from, of course, Oppie, no question, Mr. Tannen, Mokham Kodlish, Mr. Schuster, Zangesintenstark, he definitely would have been there. Who can, who can forget the late, great Mr. Nussbaum from Goodyear's used to come in for a little tipple, a little, a little whiskey. I remember once him and I started dancing for some reason. I've no idea why doing a slow dance cheek to cheek. This was the youth minion. It was nuts. It was crazy. It was holy. It was beautiful. It was everything. And it was all down to Yanko. So to give it Torah, I know a few. I don't need to. I think all of us here celebrating Yankel's life is the Dvar Torah, is this Kiddush Hashem. Remembering the man, and I'm sure there'll be many yeshivas who'll have memorial services, and many kehillas who'll have memorial services, and many banks who'll have memorial services. I'm sure. But I think this is the one that he would have wanted. This is the thing he wanted to leave behind. This is his legacy. And all the people here, and I want to thank quite a few of the members of the board of past Adas for, yes, supporting us. Or for taking, turning a blind eye every now and then. Thank you, Mr. Ex-President. And thank you all of you, because it's not easy looking at an empty flat next to the shul. It's not easy. There is an empty flat, everybody. There were no kids, there were no grandchildren, there was no wife. It's not easy. And there are quite a few people like this. We lost two few weeks ago, we lost Israel, we lost Clive Goodman. It's not easy. And if anyone around here is watching us, you know someone who is, who is of an age, who cares, 30, 40, 50, please, in the name of Rav Hartman, he's asked me to tell them, please, it's not too late not to be lonely. So let us hope that we tonight Continue Yankel's family as he would have loved it with his kids in his shul and his grandchildren, machas in other shul, and his great grandchildren all over the world. May his neshama be an aliyah. And even today, I would have refused, refused to speak because Liverpool won again, those swines, but Yankel would be happy. Yankel would be happy. Barry, do you remember the um, Champions League semi-final in Yankel's room, Herzliya, Pesach, 1999? Gigs in the last minute. Yankel had a bit of a wager with you on that game, I think. He lost money. Not the first time I heard him swear, but definitely not the last. All those wonderful memories for a wonderful man, a wonderful mentor, a wonderful guide, a wonderful friend. Yehi zichroi boruch. Good night, everyone. Thank you so much for spreading the love. Wow. Um, just wow. What, how, how do you follow that up? Um, I also have to jump off in a minute. My wife and kids are coming home. It's uh, nearly five o'clock in America. Um, I think we'd like to re resume uh, opening the floor to everybody. Um, shall, we, shall we go back to Barry? Barry, do you want to continue your thoughts? But also, um, there are still 95 people on this call. So if everyone uh, just has 60 seconds of something to say, we'll be here till uh, you know, another hour and a half. So let's, um, let's try and keep it short, everyone, please. Thank you, Nelly, very much appreciated. If anyone else wants to share some words, please wave to the camera and I will unmute you. Let's start with, um, let's start with Barry. Um, Yossi said most of what I was going to uh finish off and um, although I can say a few word, word, more words, I, I believe it, I'm sure I'll be able to speak in the youth service in due course 
um, let other people have an opportunity now to say you know, kind and generous words towards your uncle. Thank you. Hi. I have to say that listening to Yossi, the greatest tribute that you could give to such a man as Yako Plitnik is to listen to somebody like Yossi speak about him in such ways. I was not part of the youth minion of the Henna Das. I was a little bit older. I was the youth minion of Rav Khunas with Itcher Hus. And I agree that it's the most amazingly formative thing that any young person can have for, the, for his future, being able to daven for nomad, being able to speak in public and so forth. Um, I was never in Yankel's minion, but I did spend a lot of time with Yankel in Hebron, Pashas Chai Sora, where he would come even in the days when he was half blind. He would come to Chai Sora to be with the, the Bochrim in the yeshiva. And he was always, always one of the boys a most inspiring, most inspiring person, um, much younger than his, than his years. Um, I will always remember him and I will always um, value the time that I spent with him and a unique con contribution that he made to the youth of our Stott in Hendon. Um, it's just a tremendous loss. And as, as Yossi says, there's an empty flat next to the Hendon Adas. It really is empty. It's a great void uh, within us. And let us always remember what this amazing person brought to us. Sometimes, sometimes it's a person who has no wife and no kids who has the greatest family of all. And he lives the greatest family of all. And may his Neshama have an Aliyah. And I am so happy that he has been buried in Beit Shemesh, in the land that he loved, and uh, may his neshama have an aliyah every year. Um, perhaps um, Menachem Gertner, if he's still on, might want to share some uh, some words. Um, yeah, it looks eager, agreeable. Yeah. Thank you all. Um, I, it, it's hard for me to say too much because the uncle meant um, so much to me and to my family. Um, my father had this chus to be must be the uncle uh, here at, uh, at his levi in London. And uh, thank you, Nathanael, for winding back the years um, to, to your speeches in the youth minion every Shabbos. Yankel, we called him Uncle Yankel. He touched our hearts for so many of us. Uh, he really was a family member um, for me. He ate my parents' Friday night Shabbos table pretty much every week um, for, for my entire life. I'm 34, for pretty much my whole life he was there until the last couple of years when, when maybe it was too hard for him. Um, of course, my mother we had to invite him every single Shabbos, uh, specifically, uh, being the gent that he was. Um, if, if she, if she wouldn't call during the week, uh, he wouldn't ask for someone in, inconvenience us just by showing up. So uh, my mother had to specifically invite him every Shabbos. Um, he was so close to us that um, my brother Avi, uh, his full name, uh, some of the, the Nishma Yisrael people will know his full name is Avram Zalman, um, Zalman being after the uncle's father. So, so my brother Avi is actually has the schus of being named after the uncle Plitnik's chosher father, the Rafa Liverpool, the Zalman Plitnik. Um, and he came on our family holidays. We've looked at the uh, reminisced, looking at our family photo albums, and, and he's there from the beginning um, until the end. He participated in all our simchas. Um, but it wasn't just just my family. It was also for so many of you looking at us, at all of you here on the call. Um, he he touched our hearts. He was so special for all of us, um, and and he loved us all, and we, and we loved him back. Uh, he he, he, I, he was totally unique in every respect. Um, that it's hard for me to, to believe that he's no longer with us. Um, but of course, looking uh, at what he, what he started, um, I'm quite sure that Nishma Sisrael would not be here um, 
the Rav was um, was a gaba of, in in his shul. Stephen and Dofer, you were a gaba. Dovzi Koma, you were a gaba there. Um, so many of us who were involved in Nishmas, we we start we got our our, our head start from Yankel. Uh, we owe him a lot, and we will continue his legacy. Yizichar Baruch. Uh, if there's any other hands, perhaps um, perhaps Aaron Maya Ackerman, I can see it's on the call. The video is off. No. Uh, anyone else? Some closing words? Mr. Rowe, possibly? Hold on. Okay. Yeah, in the in the name of all the organizers, I want to thank everyone, all of the speakers, uh, uh, especially, and our um, guest from abroad, uh, Nelly Gertner, who it was a, a real um, a real walk down memory lane to to hear him speak in front of a youth million audience after after so long. And Mitzvah Shem, we should only come together for uh, for Simchas in the future, and uh, I'm sure that we will continue to have many memories of Rabbi Yankel. And for any further, for any further such memories, we only need to visit uh, Barry in the Youth Minion, um, uh, once it reopens uh, after the lockdown, to hear to hear more um, uh, more regaling of um, of the of the wonder that was Rubyanko Plintnik. Oliver Shalom. Thank you, everyone. Have a lovely night, and we should come together for Simchas.